The following segment is sponsored by Smith Injury Law and 300hurt.com. You would never want to do anything that could hurt your legal case down the road. That's why our next guest and his book are such valuable resources. Richard Smith of Smith Injury Law is here this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Margaret. Um, in your book, 10 Critical Mistakes to Avoid If You're Injured in a Car Wreck, one of the areas where people might misstep has to do with gaps in treatment. What's so troubling if you've got a client who breaks, who has breaks in their medical care after an accident? Well, the insurance companies tend to try to find every way they can to help themselves and not help the client. And one of the things they argue is if you waited a while to go to a doctor, that maybe the, the injury you're going for is not related to your car accident. And so they check very carefully to see if you have gaps in treatment. And what I mean by a gap in treatment is, let's say you're involved in a car accident and you, and you go to the emergency room. If you go right from the scene, no issue. Let's say you go home first, wait two or three days, then go to the emergency room. They may question that. But what the biggest issue is, is if you go and you wait several weeks or maybe even a month or longer to go get treatment because you are hoping it goes away, you think you're going to be fine, whatever reason you have for delaying the treatment, the longer that gap is, the more likely the insurance company is to question it and not consider it when they're negotiating with either you or your lawyer. So that's one of the things we do is we always try to make sure our clients don't make that mistake and we check on them, make sure they're getting their treatment and they're not putting it off for some reason. Right. And, you know, you, you write in the book that the burden of proof that the accident caused the medical condition is really on the plaintiff. Um, so there's not going to be an assumption that goes in the plaintiff's favor. Um, all the bases really have to be covered. You use an example of a broken arm. A broken bone at the scene is a pretty straightforward case. The bigger problem is when you have not a broken bone, but let's say that you've got a, a back injury that later develops in the back surgery and you have to have a disc removal or discectomy. Mm -hmm. Well, those typically take time to develop. So if you wait a long time before getting treatment and there's a long gap between the time of the accident and the time their doctor says, hey, I think you really need to have back surgery, that's going to be a more of a problem. It's not as big a problem when it's a broken bone because that usually happens right at the scene of the accident and it's usually able to be found uh, within a few days afterwards. Right. Well, one reason an attorney is especially valuable if you're injured in an accident also has to do with the medical provider. In your line of work, we've talked about this and you've seen medical providers that are hostile even to the point of maybe making notes in medical records that should not be there. That's absolutely correct, and that's really unfortunate that it's true. Uh, everything now today is political. I mean, even people's views on science and climate and everything tends to be shaded by their politics. Same with doctors. If you go to a doctor who's very conservative, doesn't like plaintiffs, then uh, you will see things in your medical records that you wouldn't believe would be in there, things like they're questioning you know, your pain threshold, Statements like maybe they have secondary gain issues, things that are just the doctor's opinion that really don't really apply to the case. So you got to make sure your doctor believes you and that supports you and doesn't think his or her role is to try to investigate to see whether or not you are uh, exaggerating your claim, for example. And some doctors take it upon themselves to do that and you know, their job is to be your provider, your medical care provider, not necessarily to try to investigate, you know, whether your complaints of pain are legitimate. That's part of practicing medicine. I'm not trying to, you know, say that, but you have to be careful because sometimes your provider may be predisposed to be anti-plaintiff, anti-injured worker, and workers' comp cases is another example of that. So be careful. Right. Well, and you get into all of these details, everything we've discussed and more in your book, 10 Critical Mistakes to Avoid If You're Injured in a Car Wreck. People can download it at 300hurt.com. Um, before we let you go today, talk to us about your areas of practice at Smith Injury Law. Well, we handle unbilled accident cases. We talked about that today. Workers' compensation claims, Social Security disability claims. Uh, we're involved in anything in which a person is injured. We practice in South Carolina and North Carolina. When you call us, you get either myself or my partner, Scott Becky. Both of us have over 20 years of experience. I have over 30 years of experience 
in this area. So you're not going to be pushed off or handed off to somebody uh, who's either a paralegal or only the practice of law for a short period of time. Uh, we've had a lot of experience. We know what to look for, and that, we think that pays off in the cases because there are little small things that people miss, and it's not much we haven't seen in our you're there, to, you're there to do the work and take care of working people. Richard Smith of Smith Injury Law. Get in touch with Richard Smith by calling 300 Hurt or visit 300hurt.com. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Margaret.